There are many ways to add club edge speed. You can work on your ground force reactions. You can work on getting some lag. But I've really only found one way that's going to help you to instantly add club edge speed to your game, and that's creating more space and time to accelerate the club. The more space and time you have to accelerate the club, the more speed you can generate, and the more, ultimately, the distance that you can get from that. So how do we do that? So there's a, there's a horizontal component, and then there's also a vertical component. The horizontal components would be how we turn our hips and turn our shoulders, right? So if I don't turn my hips and turn my shoulders, and I just kind of get my arms over here, it's gonna be very, very difficult for me to create speed from here. I need to go ahead and turn my, my, my hips and turn my shoulders so I can get that club going back further. We also have a vertical component. So this is where I'm talking about lifting the club up, getting the club up higher in the air. If I bring that club back here, even if I turn my hips and my shoulders a lot, I just don't have a lot of space and time to accelerate the club. I need to get those arms up higher so that way I have a lot more space. So how do we work on this? So the first thing I wanna do here is show you what a swing would look like if I restricted those things. Because I see people in lessons all the time who are really restricting these things and robbing themselves of distance. Then they work on these things and instantly they've added a lot of club head speed. I've seen people add more than 20 miles per hour just by working on you know, this, these things that I'm gonna be talking about. So in this swing here, I'm gonna to try to restrict my turn, my horizontal components and my vertical components and see what kind of speed I can generate. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not really sure where this, where this is gonna go. I'm hoping I can hit it solid, but I'm gonna to try to hit this with a lot of effort here and see what kind of speed I can generate by doing what feels like to me is very, very restrictive. It may not look super restrictive on video, hopefully it does, but I'm gonna really, really try to restrict myself and see what I can do. So that I hit way off the heel. Didn't hit it very good, didn't go very far, but I got 105 miles per hour there. I just felt super rushed. I actually came over the top there a little bit and just hit a pull off the heel, carried about 205 yards and only had a smash factor of 1.35. That's, that's not my best right there. I had a lot of spin too because cause I felt like I had to rush it so much because I was trying to give it so much effort. Got 105 miles per hour, which isn't too bad, but that's definitely much lower than my normal. So how can I instantly add that club head speed? So first what I want you to do is grab an alignment stick and get in your stance here and put it just in, inside your uh, trail foot there. And what this is gonna add, this is gonna add, uh, this is gonna act as where you wanna get the shoulders to turn with this club uh, across your shoulders here. So what I want you to do is I want you to take this club, put it across your shoulders, and I apologize if this is hitting the mic, but what we want to do is I want you to turn your shoulders and match it up to that club on the ground. Now, the reason why we have it on that trail foot is that one thing I see a lot of people do in an effort to get the crate more space and time is they will actually kind of lean back this way, right? So if you imagine I have this, I'm taking my swing. Now, this is lengthening my swing. I am getting the club to go back further. I am creating more space and time, but that's not the way you want to do it. That's going to lead to a lot of issues in the golf swing. That's going to lead to most likely an over the top. You're going to tend to kind of fall away in the downswing when you do that. So it's just very, very hard to be consistent if we're really leaning toward the target. We want to stay behind the golf ball, get nice and loaded up so that way we can shift our weight um, more easily. So that's why we're putting that on the trail foot here. So initially we're going to work on these horizontal components. So that's the hip turn and the shoulder turn. I know you may be thinking, I'm not flexible. I'm not gonna be able to turn very much. Well, I'm not flexible either. I'm actually very, very unflexible in, in my lower body. I'm, I'm working on it right now to hopefully get some freed up. But what I have to do, because when you turn your hips, your trail leg is internally rotating. So it's going like that. You can see there, I'm, I have a hard time doing that. So what I have to do is I have to turn my trail foot out a little bit and that helps free me up to turn my hips a little bit more. So I'd highly recommend doing that. One other thing I'd recommend doing is letting this heel, this lead heel come off the ground. It's completely fine to do that. I know a lot of you may have been told, hey, keep your, keep your feet on the ground, but that's a total myth. Look at players like Jack Nicklaus, Bubba Watson. There's lots of players out there 
who lift that heel off the ground. I've seen Tiger do it um, sometimes. So go ahead and let that heel come off the ground. That can help free up the hips. If you keep that heel on the ground, it can act as an anchor for your hips and not allow those uh, to free up. One last piece would be to drop this trail foot back a little bit. That can help you to, to get turned away a little bit more. So those things, the hips are the number one thing that I see people struggle with as far as the horizontal components. Most people are able to get a good turn between the shoulders and the hips. It's the hips and the ground where I usually see the issues. So free those things up by doing that. So get this club across the shoulders here. And what I want you to do is I want you to do three back swings and then on the last one, do a downswing. So the reason why I want you to do this is I want you to create momentum here to really get that, feel that good stretch. So I've got my 12 foot turned out a little bit to help me turn a little bit more. And I'm gonna go one, two, and then the last one, three, I'm gonna swing all the way through. Now I really want you to feel that stretch in the turn there and get that nice and matched up there. If, you, if I'm looking right down with my eyes here, I can see that my club is going right down that. So do that a few times, you know, get in four or five reps of doing that. And now let's get the club in our hands and try to replicate that same motion. So again, I'm gonna free up my hips, free up my shoulders. I'm gonna allow myself to get a good turn here. And again, I'm gonna do three pumps. I'm gonna go one, two, and now last one, three, I'm gonna swing through into the full finish. And you can feel there how much time you're gonna to have to accelerate the club. It's gonna feel like you're creating more effortless speed when you do that. So get in a few more reps with that. And then let's move on to the vertical component. So the vertical component is getting those arms up in the air. So when we're getting the hands raising up, that's essentially like doing a touchdown signal, like a, a football referee doing a touchdown signal. That's essentially what's happening. We're just lifting the arms straight up. So what I want you to do again is do add this feeling in with the last one we were getting the big turn and matching your shoulders up. Let's also feel like we're getting that touchdown feeling, like we're lifting the club. We're taking this club up an elevator shaft. That's what we want to feel like is happening. So I'm going to implement that same thing. And go nice and slow at first. If you're someone who swings very, very flat right now, this is probably going to feel really weird. So go nice and slow at first and then you know, build up the speed from there. So again, I'm gonna do three, three pumps here, and on the last one, I'm gonna swing through, and I'm gonna feel big shoulder turn and you know, doing a touchdown signal, feeling that club go basically straight up in the air. So if you uh, watch me here, I'm gonna go one, two, and then three on the last one, I'm gonna swing all the way through. So you can see I went nice and slow there, build up the speed, build up to much, much faster speed. So now let me take a swing here after I've, I've worked on getting that good stretch, freeing up my hips, freeing up my shoulders, getting those arms to go up higher. And let's see if I can get some nice club head speed boost here from working on those. I can get my T in the ground here. All right, so let me move this out of the way. All right, so got a good one there. Definitely a big club head speed boost there. Almost 10 miles per hour extra club head speed there just from feeling more turn of the shoulders and more turns of the hips and more vertical lift of the club. All right, so now that you have this newfound speed, now you need to learn how to be able to control it much better. You know, with great power comes great responsibility, right? So the best way to do that is to get this club shallowing in the start of the downswing and also get that club face squaring up sooner in the start of the downswing. The sooner you can do that, the better, because that allows you to get this club in the slot and then turn through the golf ball as hard as you possibly can. You know that face is gonna be square, you know that club is gonna be on plane, and you're gonna be watching that ball go down the middle of the fairway. Because what happens is if you get to where you're steep, right? So now I've gotta stand up and really throw my hands at it. I may have all this great speed, but I don't have any control of it because I'm just, I'm depending it all on timing. Right, so you know, some days you may be great, your timing is perfect, and then other days it's like you don't even know why you came out and played. You wish you would have stayed home because you're just hitting your drives all over the place. So if we can get to where this club is shallowing out earlier in the start of the downswing, get this face squaring up earlier in the start of the downswing, that's gonna allow you to just turn right through it and just know every single time. That's how the tour players, that's how Dustin Johnson just rears back 
swings about as hard as he can, and he knows where that ball is going about every single time. So this is what we call the anti-roll method at Tosby Golf. You may have heard of it called the tour twist, uh, but if you want to stick around, I'm going to show you a preview of a video where Clay Ballard, the founder of Tosby Golf, is going to talk to you a little bit about what this anti-roll method is. But if you'd like to see the whole video, all you have to do is click the I card that's going to pop up on your screen, or you can click the link below in the description. Play well. Here's the bottom line. If you've been taught to roll the club in the early downswing, that causes the shaft to get steep. And that steep club causes all your problems. It causes you to hit it way behind the big hitters and way inconsistent with your quality of strikes. So you're in the tall grass and the trees and the hazards all day long. Now the great news is this. There's really only two pieces that you need to know to fix all these problems. The first one is we need to learn the proper way to square up the club face. Instead of rolling the forearms and getting steep, there's another way that the pros do this. Once you learn this right way to square up the club face, then you can shallow out from the inside and everything starts to fit together. Now I'm gonna teach you this right now in what I call the anti-roll method. You may also hear this called the motorcycle move or the tour twist, but let's walk through exactly how to do that. Now what I want you to do is go ahead and go kind of in the last parallel in the downswing. So here, I want my hips to go ahead and be opening up. I want my club to be parallel with the ground and I want my hands to be in front of my right thigh. Now, when I take my grip, you're gonna notice that when I do this, the club face is basically straight up and down. So if I'm looking at it from this angle, you'll see the face is straight up and down and my logo of my glove is pointed out in front of me. Now from there,